back to Maypole Farm and we are up at the animal dealer because I want to buy some more cows. Uh, I think we have enough food that we're not going to run out of food as... How many times can I say food in one short sentence? That we're not going to run out of food before we get into producing more. So leasing the uh, the animal trailer that I used last time, we're leasing it from the animal dealer so it's delivered up there for us. Although they do charge us a little bit for that pleasure of that and they always deliver it facing the wrong way which is a little bit annoying yeah so gonna replace the the 12 cows that i sold when we added in maze plus this is kind of annoying as i've said before because uh, we're only gonna be able to buy 18 month old cows and we sold cows that were a little bit older than that and would now have been significantly older but I wasn't confident that we could feed 24 cows at the time. Now I'm pretty sure we can. So we're going to buy some more cows. Um, once we've done that, going to work on finishing. So I'm going to skip ahead from there because um, we're still on March 1st. Uh, March 2nd, I do a bunch of, um, so yeah, 1,550 per cow, 12 cows, 1,818. 18,600 pounds words um, yeah once once they've got these back and fed um, I'm going to do some contracts uh, over the uh, the second day of March playing on a three day month if you are new or had forgotten um, end up doing a bunch of fertilizing contracts basically which pays really nicely gets us this cash back which is cool and then on the third day of March, we're going to be doing a bunch of fertilizing and some prep for planting corn in April. Um, the contracts are really starting to pick up on here, which is nice. I will show more of them once it becomes a bit more interesting. Um, you know, there's only so many fertilizing contracts you can show. Hopefully you guys enjoyed or have enjoyed or are enjoying the uh, the classic contracting setup that I released um, over the weekend, which is the setup that I use on here. I did have to make a tweak to that um, after I released, after I recorded the video, but before I released it, I found, and it's still not perfect, um, the potato, the small potato planting setup. I was using the fit, and a bit like when you plow with the fit, it was leaving massive gaps. So I swapped it to the New Holland because that was an easy swap and it's better, but it still leaves some gaps. So uh, be aware of that if you're using it. Um, it's only for the smaller one, which I think only kicks in on small small potato contracts. So yeah, something to be aware of. Um, so 12 cows are in. We're just going to drop the trailer here so we can get them fed. Um, because I used to have cows in here, there is a little bit of straw a little bit of milk to sell and there may even be a tiny bit of food left um, but we're gonna get them all fed um, because maize plus and cows eating a lot of feed we're quite quickly clearing out the root crop shed which is uh, yeah um, if we get through it we get through it eventually we might switch to making TMR on here um, the reason I'm not is I find that quite often although we possibly won't on here i tend to revert to a very standard tmr mix and uh, we could maybe change that by creating a custom recipe for on here to force me to make it differently uh, which is definitely an option but at the moment i'm enjoying the separate feeding and um, so you can see actually they had eaten pretty much all of their food so that's good um, before i sold them yeah i'm, I'm enjoying the separate feeding the complexity is that you need more ingredients, which is yeah, reflect maze, how Maze Plus works, I guess. Uh, it's Monday today for me, uh, so I recorded this video over the weekend, just finishing up the commentary this morning. And uh, I have a couple of farm sim related jobs I want to get done today, 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 today in the real world. Um, I have over the weekend i've been doing some of the maths around pumps and hoses bgas and you may have actually seen that video before you see this one depending on whether i get it recorded today um they're really cool and hopefully if you if i've released the video already 
just ignore me throwing that bale across the map hopefully you enjoyed it if not it'll be coming tomorrow probably um so it just depends if i get it recorded today it might take a while to get recorded um i have all the bits for my new pc to build which is awesome i uh i was very keen to get started on it yesterday but decided i wanted a better cpu cooler than the stock one and some fans so those are arriving by lunchtime today from amazon so yep get a couple of silage bales unwrapped to feed and then the last thing that i have to do over the course of this week really is testing the uh updated version of maze plus um details of the update are on the maze plus discord it is not ready for release yet there is no date for when it will be released uh, but go check that post out because there are some new features coming uh, thanks to um loki he added in a really cool new feature that we used to have in fs19 that's now back for fs22 um, and yeah a bunch of uh, bgo has been working really hard on fixing a lot of the bugs um, and then some of the other scripting guys from the community are working on getting maze plus working with pumps and hoses um, is one of the most common questions at the moment the workaround that i'm using on adding them is i fill my trailer with may silage because that's what i'm putting through the bga and i then press f12 and turn it into whole crop silage it works for now it's a temporary solution whilst we uh or whilst the, the really clever scripting guys work out implementing something better so yeah you can use it you just need to put a little bit of effort in and just suspend reality for a moment so getting some grain mix going in and then uh, it looks like we're pretty much done for feeding these guys um, obviously we're now doubling our amount of work for caring for the cows um, and as I skipped ahead we're up to 42,000 now um, so that's the combination I should have put the finance screen up that's the combination of doing contracts and selling milk and paying wages for our staff um, and we've now got a bit more slurry so i'm gonna see if i can finish slurrying the grass field um ahead of i could cut it in april or i could wait till may for a bigger yield i'm thinking because of the the fermentation time and the fact that we are not massively overloaded with silage at the moment i might do a cut in april um do an early cut get the first lot of bales fermenting I'm just going to say thank you to the patrons and the YouTube channel members. Wow, that was going by a bit quick. I might have to slow that down. Uh, appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Um, yeah, I could do an early cut in April, which would get the bales fermenting, um, but would mean we would get slightly less off the field. Um, I could mow some of it and then leave some. That is definitely an option. Um, we're using, I'm expecting to use for about 12 bales of silage a month. That means we're going to need 140 odd bales of silage a month at the moment. Um, once we get some maize silage we can use that as well and mix that in. Um, so maybe we want to cut enough that we can make, I don't know, 15, 20 bales maybe cut half the field let the rest grow on and cut that in the second in may um, that's an option it is an option um kind of tempted by that actually um, but for now we're just getting the light you can you can just see the line particularly beyond the ring of death where we ran out of slurry when we were slurrying last time once we've done this we can return the slurry spreader that we have on lease um, because we also have a huge amount of manure and our, our empty field is going to be planted with corn and that needs quite a lot of nitrogen added so we're going to do a heavy dose of manure on that field um, before we plant it next time but yeah I, I, I think we we mow maybe only a third of this field early get some bales in and fermenting and then leave the rest that's an option the other thing we could do once the grass is growing is we could go down the uh, 
the indirect grazing route so we could get a forage wagon and we could mow some and feed that way through summer um, that will cover everything except the hay requirement we have a reasonable amount of hay at the moment anyway I think that might be the way to go actually I think that might be the way to go um, maybe we'll set aside yeah if we set aside a third of this field to use for for indirect grazing that's slowly done i'm just going to lease a manure spreader um it's just a base game one it looks like it sort of fits in with you know the kind of periods not particularly high tech in my mind uh, it's a nice size for the tractor that we've got so yeah and it just meant one less mod so i'm gonna go for the the brantner uh, I'm going to get the, the 15 metre spread width on it. That makes it a bit bigger, but yeah. So let's get that leased for nearly £2,000, but it's not, not a huge amount. So yeah, what I think, and this has literally just occurred to me, it wasn't part of the plan, is rather than silaging a third of the field, we'll, we'll set aside a third of the field. Maybe we'll start from the far edge. Um, or maybe we just work around the headlands um, and yes I know this is hard mode but I'm using the trigger to fill um, for now it works look away if you're bothered and imagine that I'm working with a bucket for five minutes um, yeah maybe we just go around the headlands and uh, we indirect graze the cows for summer Um, that will save some of the root crop and the power food as well. I'm just nervous as to whether we're going to have, a, have enough grass. So what what I think, and yeah, so I think we, we indirect graze the cows through summer, through spring and summer while the grass is growing. Um, we'll be able to take a cut every couple of months off for that. We'll get a bit less, but um, we'll see how that goes. You know, we need we don't need a big forage wagon if we get like a twenty thousand litre forage not even that if we get a, you know a small forage wagon and one forage wagon load a day will feed each cow pen which is not going to be much and so i'm adding 120 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare which is the minimum that you need for corn depending on the soil type i did not check the soil type here um but i guess a base we can do the rest with some solid fur or some liquid fur afterwards um yeah we'll, we'll indirect graze through the summer um we've got some hay still and i think we do some hay contracting and the excess we keep to feed the cows again that's going to work well it worked well last season and yeah i think that's it that that will save us money on buying grain mix it means the root crops that we've got we can save some for feeding next year and maybe we can return the ruby shovel that we're leasing and there's another point there's another point that i've forgotten and um, yeah, basically it's just going to reduce our reliance on brought in feed and feed that we have a limited amount of so yeah i'd like that idea um, i'm going to have to have a look for there are plenty of modded forage wagons about for something that looks like about the right age and um, probably I'll work out roughly how big we need it so that about one wagon a day in each pen will feed the cows I like that idea it's, it's again it's something different to what I'm doing on Attingham where over the summer they graze um, this will uh, yeah this will mean that we're still doing work but we're preserving the silage and things like that for later in the year and we can let the grass grow to its maximum state for the silage. Yeah, happy with that. I'm gonna have to work out how I'm gonna manage keeping an area for gra for indirect grazing and an area for field work. I'll sort that out somehow. Um, someone did ask about whether I could uh, set up a grazing pen for the cows and move them out into that. That is another option is another option that we could uh, do that and maybe supplement feed with small amounts um 
So that's just showing how much we got for the milk sales. So six thousand pounds so far this month. In fact, that's for the whole month because we've sold milk. Um, that's another option. Actually, we could make. I could make a small pasture. Um, the issue would be that we wouldn't get the slurry and the manure and the milk so much. So maybe not. Um, I think grazing grazing out in a pasture with FS is more realistic for beef, where you're not so worried about the outputs. Um, with, with dairy cows, I think, unless unless you included a milking machine in that pasture, there are options. But I think we're going to go this way. We're going to we're not going to graze animals on here at the moment. We're going to do the indirect grazing. So, just to show off another feature of Maze Plus, I uh, yeah, I like that idea. So yeah, after that ramble about feeding. Feeding, obviously, if you're playing with Maze Plus, you know feeding is a big part of Maze Plus and planning your feeding for the year. Um, we have flying deer. I'm not going to go the the Cartec route. I just watched his latest adding and video. Um, if you're not watching his stuff, go check him out. He's really good. Um, and for an ex console player, he's really getting to grips with Maze Plus. Um, so. Like I did on Attingham, you can feed, you can condition the grass um, before you feed it. So if you mow with the conditioner on, that will give you conditioned grass, and that is a complete feed. So you can bale, store that, and do that as an as an easy option to feed the animals. But I'm not going to do that on here. Um, I am still using that on Attingham to feed the sheep. Um, as I went through winter, it was a really easy way of feeding the sheep. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those bales. Um, I might wrap them on there. Uh, or just use them up. The cows will quickly get through them. So, yeah. That, for me, was an experiment in will it work. I sort of knew it would, but just wanted to demonstrate it. And, yeah, it, 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 if you're struggling with feeding animals, getting started, it's a really good way of doing it. Um, and that is good enough for fertilizing this field. I'm going to hang on to the spreader because the grass that we do start to mow, we can... Uh, perfect. My awesome driving skills kicking in. The grass that we do mow for indirect grazing, we can then put some manure on to re-fertilize to uh, maximize the yield of it. We could look at selling manure or slurry, but we don't own a BGA, so I think that's probably not a great option. It's better if we can use it to do as much of the fertilizing as our fields, of our fields as we can. That will save us money on fertilizer costs. So that's my plan. Um, I do have pumps and hoses installed on here, and at some point I will look at including bits of that as well. Maybe the separator, so that we can use that for bedding. I've not played with the separator yet, so that's definitely something we could look at. I think they do smaller scale ones, which obviously hopefully a bit cheaper. Uh, but yeah, there's something that I would consider looking at as well. Um, because we've spent a lot of time in the fear, we are going to jump in the Z-Tor, or Zeta, or however you would like to say it, to do our solid fertilizer spreading. Um, this is a big fert spreader on the back of this little tractor. I just wanted to drive it because it's really been sat ignored in the shed for quite a long time. So I thought it would be nice to break it out. We're going to take the tractor into the workshop and get some narrow wheels on it because we're driving on a crop that we have got planted. But yeah, you can see the weight on the back of this guy. Um, yeah, so little bit of work in the workshop get some narrows on it which is not great for compaction obviously with this much load uh, but we don't want to destroy the crop and i didn't put tram lines in um the other thing i'm going to have a look at is can we stick a front weight on here because that will at least help that's not the option for a front weight attaches is though so we could have a three point but we don't really need that on here or we can have a 350 kilogram front weight which is perfect i think um and then i'm just going to remove the design change that i made by mistake there it is we don't need any stickers on the tractor and then we need to look for some narrows um this has some cool wheel options but those will do the job um, I, the crop is potentially in an early enough growth state that we wouldn't damage it anyway but i just want to be careful and 
in future we can use this as a spray attractor as well i did think about doing liquid fur um but we have the spreader and it's full so we may as well make use of it uh, and we aren't going to need to weed anything on here because both of our arable fields have been ploughed because they've both had root crops in um, so i've had a look across the field um there's a slightly weird split in the nitrogen so we're going to do it in two two goes um the first one we're going to add about can't remember what i've settled on about 70 to 80 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare and um, that's going to get us to a good level with some maybe being a bit high um, obviously with the era that we're playing in we don't have gps controlled fertilization so having to set it manually so some will be good some will be perfect some will be okay it's, it's kind of how how it's going to be on here you can see the the weird yellow split um so we're going to go along this headland and then up the edge of the field to address that um, and then we'll we'll fill in the yellow bit um, and then we'll do the other bit um, so if you watch virtual farmer you'll see he's doing something very similar on his attingham series uh at my suggestion because uh yeah he uh he does a lot about realism and then was running around with a gp rtk gps controlled soil scanner but yeah i did suggest that he takes on this approach that i'm using as well um and he has and he seems to be enjoying it it's it's a fun challenge to do this in precise farming um so yeah i mean i'm slightly exploiting the fact that i have a map um you know basically what i'm assuming is the economist has told us there are some areas where we're going to need to apply a little bit more fertilizer and some of them where we can apply a little bit less I'm doing it on quite a core scale. You know, about half the field is getting this 70 kilograms, and the other half is going to get whatever I put on for the lower amount. I can't remember what that was. We'll have a look when we get there. Yeah, and this so this uh, canola is going to be part of our winter feed for the cows, um, or if we run out of grass to direct in, to do that indirect grazing, then we'll, we'll use some of it for that as well once it's grown in. Um, yeah that's uh that's where we are long term well medium term goals on here now are um so i had the actually that was on furling so i had a suggestion for furling which is my patreon series go check join patreon if you want to check that out um to lease a medium tractor on there because i only have two small tractors on there and actually on here maybe we could look at adding in a lease to own and uh lease look look at getting a tractor on a long-term lease with the plan of buying it um i really want land um the reason i want land is more land means more crops more crops mean more cows more cows mean more milk which means more money that's my theory um although i'm using contracts a lot at the moment i don't want that to be the long-term mainstay on here of how we make money and for that to change we need more cows and to have more cows we need more food um, and some of that food will come from contracting you know hay contracts are going to be a good source of hay bales for us they they did us really well or are, are working really well for keeping the cows fed at the moment so i think we'll do that again over the summer and i'll show some of those because we're using the custom contracting setup that i've got but you can see some areas on the field here are getting a lot more nitrogen it's still okay but it's quite high um, a lot of it is good so yeah we're not going to get a perfect yield on here when when we progress to more you know maybe 10 20 years forward in our technology we'll have a gps and we can use gps in the precision farming and we'll see things improve that way you know we'll get better yields and stuff um, which is something that's going to be really cool about this series this is going to be a long running series because uh, i'm enjoying it there's the possibility that in the future i will move maps um you know this, this this feels like it's going to be something that involves about 10 years of in in game play uh is that right to so we're, we're 80s to 90s now we'll then go 90s to 2000s after two years and then 2000 to 2010 2010 to 2020 so yeah we're looking at about eight to ten game years i think to progress through the decades assuming i do about two game years per 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 what time window um 
and that's a long time to play on a map this is a nice map to play on there's plenty of opportunity for us to expand and grow and move um, there are a lot of farms on this map so we could you know we could end up buying another farm and expanding that way um, we could sell, end up selling off this farm and completely moving it's, uh, yeah it's something that I wanted in FS22 was a really long running series and maybe this is the one that's going to be that um, and it may be that we take it to other maps we'll see how it goes um, in fact I'm interested in thoughts on that and maybe we slow down that progression and aim for a, a 20 game year series rather than a 10 game year series um, yeah I might have a think about that, about mapping out the timeline for this and see what people think in the next video. And it's an excuse to do some PowerPoint and a slide and stuff, which is always good. It's not quite Excel, you know, that's, that, that, that's not overrating. PowerPoint is not Excel, but you know, it does help. So that's all the jobs done for today. We've got all of our fields. So the canola is good now till harvest grass is good until we start mowing it corn planting next time and that's going to need a bit more fertilizer but for now i'm going to say thanks for watching folks and i hope you enjoyed the video like subscribe comment and i will see you next time on maple farm